everybody, it's Mrs. Clemens and Mr. Marshall. It's not Mr. Marshall, but anyway, it's still U.S. History Flipped. Woo, 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 caw, 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 caw. All right, um, it is that time of the year, guys. We are halfway through the year, or we still have halfway to go. Regardless, we got a review. All right, so let's talk about our next time period here. Uh, the Constitution is made. We need to get our country going. All right, so what was President Washington's rationale for remaining neutral during his presidency? Uh, basically, he did not want to get his tush kicked. Um, our country was still really, really young. We didn't have a large military, um, and we just didn't have the money to fight. So really, he was just being practical. Good job, Washington. Uh, what led to the creation of political parties in the United States? Well, this also happened during Washington's presidency. Uh, basically, Hamilton, he liked the bank, in part because he created the bank. Uh, and he used the loose interpretation of the Constitution to create the bank. He said, it is necessary and proper that we have something to take care of our debts. Thomas Jefferson said, uh, I don't see anywhere where it says in the Constitution we can do that. He took the strict interpretation, and so, yeah, they had a little bit of a spat over that. You end up getting the people that follow Hamilton becoming the Federalists, the people that follow Jefferson becoming the Democratic Republicans, a.k.a. the Republicans, and, uh, well, that, as they say, is history. Um, so, eventually, Jefferson does become president, and um, he purchases a, a, just a wee touch of land that allows our country to double in size. That's Louisiana Purchase. Um, why was it controversial? Well, here's the issue. So Congress didn't grant um, specific permission to um, Madison, who he sent over there, to purchase the entire territory. Only the Port of New Orleans and a little bit of Florida. So, um, and they authorized the spending of $10 million versus $15 million that Napoleon wanted. So Jefferson had to make a decision. Am I going to um, pass up this awesome opportunity to get this huge chunk of land? Or am I, you know, by following the strict interpretation, or am I going to stretch things and get a whole bunch of land? He said, uh-huh, I'm going to stretch things. And um, he used under his ability to make treaties. And thus, we got all that territory. All right, sectionalism. Why was the plantation system used in the South rather than the North? Well, um, there's a bunch of reasons. You know, if we go back to the settling of the North and the South, it's just very different geographically in terms of the South. Better climate, longer growing season, more fertile soil, more flat land. Um, it was just, it's great for huge farms. Whereas the North, they did definitely have farms, but they were small farms. And so they had these great harbors for trade. They didn't have the longer growing season. It was rocky soil. They're just not going to have plantations there. Uh, so, um, so we have the plantations in the South. And as time is going on, um, the South says, we want more land, we want more land, which, by the way, is called Manifest Destiny. And so um, eventually we end up going to war with Mexico under James K. Polk. And uh, if you could believe it, we won. And so as a result, we get this land, which is called the Mexican Session. And included in that is California, I'm sorry, California or California, uh, New Mexico, Arizona, and Colorado. All right, so here we go. We have a bunch of things we're defining uh, that are all part of sectionalism because we have this huge conflict over the slavery. So the first thing is the Missouri Compromise. Now, we have uh, this whole idea where we need to keep the balance of states equal. So Maine entered as a free state. Missouri entered as a slave state, and they were going to set up a dividing line at 3630 um, latitude. Okay, great. But then we get more land. So now we have the Compromise of 1850, following the Mexican Session, where California enters as a free state, woohoo, um, which balanced Texas, which had entered previously as a slave state. We have the Fugitive Slave Act, which is not good, and we have popular sovereignty. Um, when we're putting popular sovereignty into effect is the Kansas-Nebraska Act, um, that the Kansas and Nebraska, they would be able to vote to decide whether they would be free or slave states. 
Dred Scott versus Sanford. This is one of those nasty Supreme Court cases that we're not big fans of. It said three major things. It said, listen, dude, um, Mr. Dred Scott, um, you know, first off, actually, it said, you're not a citizen. You shouldn't um, even be allowed to sue in court. It doesn't really matter anyway because slaves are property. You could be taken anywhere. And just for fun, the Missouri Compromise is unconstitutional. States should have the right to decide whether or not they're going to um, have slavery or not. And then the last thing is the election of Lincoln um, for 1860. And yeah, this is a major deal. He's a Republican. He's our first Republican president. He wins and it becomes the immediate cause of the secession of the southern states. All right, so now we're talking about secession. Let's talk about the Civil War. What was Lincoln's position on slavery when he ran for president? Guys, this is so, so, so important. He initially is not saying to the public, I hate slavery, let's get rid of it. He wouldn't have gotten elected if he had said that. So he, he had gone on the record and he had said that he believed that, oh, look, I have a typo. Um, he believed that the nation could not exist half slave and half free. But his platform was, listen, we'll keep slavery where it is. We're just not going to expand it. Um, advantages and disadvantages of each side. The North for advantages. We had money. We had men to fight. We had Lincoln. Love you, Lincoln. Um, on the negative, though, disadvantages, we had some crummy generals, at least in the beginning until we get Grant. Um, we were fighting on the offense, and we had some low morale. The South, on the other side, um, they had some great generals. They're fighting on the defense, so that makes things easier. They had some high morale. Um, on the negative, on the disadvantages, their political leadership was not great, especially compared to Lincoln. They had a lot less men, a lot less supplies, and a lot less money. Uh, what was the Emancipation Proclamation? So, you know, we, we know it basically, oh, it freed the slaves. But the thing you really need to understand is that the way that Lincoln, because he was so politically astute, ooh, I'm using my big words today, um, because he was so smart politically, he said, you know what, again, if I just say, oh, I want to free the slaves, people wouldn't be in favor of it. So he said, I'm doing this because it'll help us to win the war that um, it'll free the states, free the slaves in states in rebellion. So it didn't include the border states that were, you know, fighting on the side of the north. It did, however, change the purpose of the war. Um, explain his use of war powers. Well, one of the things he did that was really controversial is he did something called suspending the writs of habeas corpus. Basically, people were protesting against the draft, and he had them arrested. They were not... Um, put in in jail without a trial um, they didn't get an attorney and they were just kind of left to sit there and so this is a denied power he said well I have the power to do it because it's a time of war the other thing that he did was that Emancipation Proclamation and he said I could do that um, you know again as a war power to destabilize the South um, this was not something that was passed in Congress so that was a war power that he used all right, Reconstruction, our last thing here. Uh, what were the three Reconstruction Amendments and what rights did they grant? The 13th Amendment freed the slaves. Uh, the 14th Amendment, that granted citizenship to everyone that's born in the United States. And the 15th Amendment granted rights to vote to all men age 21 or older. So women, another 50 years, baby. Um, why was Andrew Johnson impeached? Well, you know, the simple answer is, he was kind of a jerk. The more complicated answer was, you know, he was going against the radical re reconstruction, the radical Republicans reconstruction plans. And so they kind of came up with this sort of like trap where they said, oh, you can't fire a member of your cabinet. Um, he then fired a member of his cabinet. He was impeached by the House of Representatives. But uh, when the trial went to the Senate, he was not convicted. He was one vote shy. Um, what actions did the state take, the South take, I'm sorry, to restrict the rights of um, freed slaves, the voting rights, I'm sorry, wow, I'm learning how to talk here. Uh, they had a literacy test where you had to prove you could read. Remember, it was an equal um, application of those tests. The grandfather clause, you couldn't vote unless your grandfather could vote. The poll tax where you had to pay to um, vote. And just intimidation like we were talking about with groups like the KKK. Um, what were the Jim Crow laws? 
these are laws that said, all right, we're going to have segregation, that people, um, you know, based on race will be separated. And we're going to talk a bunch more about that as we go along. And last, uh, this is another one of our negative Supreme Court cases. This is Plessy versus Ferguson. And basically what this says is uh, segregation is legal as long as it's um, equal. And as we know, separate can never be equal. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed uh, the screencast, and I hope you study a bunch and do great on the midterm.